Welcome to my mini heirloom starter kit tutorial video. I am so happy that you are here. Often that is the hardest step is just to show up and, and to try something new, right? So you can do this. I am here to go over all those details and walk you through the process. So get the embroidery files from your kit along with your fabric and the heat activated pin. I am using a light board here and they run about $20 on Amazon. I have one linked through my Amazon storefront. And while you do not need one, they are quite helpful. <laughs> so making sure to line up the straight of grain with the embroidery design. An easy way to do this is to measure like from the grain line to your selvage edge and make sure those take two different points, make sure that they are the same. Then carefully trace the design. I went ahead and traced the perimeter of the pattern, like the outermost, that solid lined edge that will be cut. The dotted lines show where those stitches are going to be placed to construct the garment, and then the space in between is called the seam allowance. That is the amount that is allowed to have the seam constructed. Not sure if that's the technical definition, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> Anywho. Take your time transferring the design. Enjoy the process, and if you feel like rushing through this, maybe this isn't the right time. After all, if you rush through the transfer process and the design looks floppy, how do you think your stitches are going to look, right? It's not gonna get any better, so. Also, I've included embroidery motifs for all the pattern pieces with the idea that you can always omit things. I like to include as much value as I can with all of my products. And I think solid practice is a good thing too. So combining those two schools of thought and you get to all these embroidery motifs. But if that overwhelms you as a beginner, then by all means take small bites. You can focus on only the middle section and leave off the outer edges. I designed this motif with the beginner in mind. Okay, so moving right along, you'll put the fabric into your hoop. I've included a budget-friendly hoop in your kit, and I've used this style for years and years. You can definitely do some wonderful stitching in these things, but a stand is definitely the bougie way to go. Anyhow, there are two points to go over with properly adjusting your fabric and an embroidery hoop. The first is that you want to get your fabric as taut as you can, at least for the majority of fabrics, while being careful not to stretch your fabric out of grain. How can you achieve this? Avoid pulling on the bias of the fabric and instead pull with the straight of grains. So you'll pull in the direction of the cross grain, tighten your hoop, then pull in the direction of the lengthwise grain, tighten your hoop, and you'll do this sort of dance of pulling and tightening, pulling and tightening until your fabric is very taut. Think of a drum here. The second point that I would like to make is you really should use a screwdriver to tighten down your embroidery hoop. That'll do a much better job than your hands, regardless of how strong your hands may be. And wrapping the hoop does wonders for keeping your fabric in place. I have a video that goes over how to do that. It is a little bit of a bougie step, so if that overwhelms you as a beginner, no worries. I'm not judging, okay? <laughs> like I said, the, the, you just gotta show up and start somewhere, and that is what we are doing here. I am happy that you are here, and we are learning this and going over this together. So, moving on to those stitches. I take one strand of floss, tie a knot in the end of it, and thread it into my needle. I'm beginning with the Lazy Daisy stitch, which starts by coming up at the bottom of the stitch, going over a few stitches like in your fabric, going over a little ways, when that creates a loop. Go over to the other end of the Lazy Daisy and put your needle on the inside of the loop. Pull things together and the last step is to send your needle down on the other side of the loop, which secures it in place and voila, a lazy daisy. So there's a couple of variations to this process depending on how you want your lazy daisy to look. Sometimes I like to use the same hole and that gives more of a together look, you know? Starts and ends at the same place as like a little point there. While other times, especially with leaves, I like to space those points out more. 
There is no right or wrong here, at least not in my book. I think the beauty is finding your own preference and enjoying hand embroidery since it allows for all these little nuances to take place. Moving on to that French knot, you'll send up your needle, wrap thread around your needle. I like to do it twice. And there may be an official number here. I've heard various schools of thought, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> we don't need to get down into the weeds. I'm wrapping my thread around my needle twice and then place your needle a few threads away from the entry point. Then pull on that thread so a little knot develops. This is key to making a pretty French knot. If it does not draw into a tight, neat situation, then you should redo it. Sorry, you do need to redo it, not should. You do need to, <laughs> it's required. <laughs> Nothing is going to magically change by sending your needle down. And here's another look at the process, zooming out this time, still wrapping that thread around your needle and sending her down. Now let's break down the outline stitch, which is how we're going to apply those curves. Start on one side of the curve so you can work from left to right. Make your stitch about eighth of an inch long, maybe a tiny bit less, but you can definitely make your stitches too small. They'll just disappear into your fabric and look untidy. So before pulling that previous stitch all the way down, I like to move it out of the way so I don't accidentally put my needle like through the floche as I make the next stitch. This stitch should start about halfway in the previous stitch and then go over about eighth of an inch. You know, you just rinse and repeat that process until you're around the entire curve. One trick is to finish by sending your needle on the opposite side of the final stitch. This may seem trivial, but I mean, you gotta put your needle down somewhere, so you might as well do it, right? And it does a wonderful job of supporting the final stitch, giving it a polished finish to that curve instead of having the final stitch kinda collapse by rolling inward. And I'm applying the same idea to those larger leaves using the outline stitch. And from here, you can follow the construction video for gown number two in my heirloom starter kit series with a few changes. First, we are going to put entredeau in the shoulder seams. Yes, you can do this and it will sparkle back at you. So line up the entredeau with right sides together on those shoulder seams of the front and sew a line of straight stitches just on the other side of those pretty holes. Try not to stitch on those holes, but don't lose any sleep over it if you do. It's okay. Then do another row of straight stitches about eighth of an inch offset. From there, trim up the extra bit and use a zigzag to enclose the raw edges. Next, we're going to put some smocking on the bottom of those sleeves. This is a great opportunity to learn smocking, even without a smocking pleater, since it's a very small amount of pleating that needs to be done. So doing it by hand only takes a few minutes. These five rows took me about five minutes to complete, and now you get to experience smocking. 
So you'll mark the dots with that heat activated pin included in your kit and the idea is to take your needle and surround the dot. So you'll go in before the dot and you'll come out just after the dot. Make sense? So from there, I left the pleating threads flat. This makes it easier to finish the bottom edge. To do this, turn up the bottom raw edge about quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and stitch that down. This can be stitched down by hand or machine. I went the machine route here with this dress. So once the sleeve is set into the dress, like you've sewn the shoulders, you've, blah, blah, blah. you've sewn the sleeve to the dress, but you have not joined the sleeve seam, okay? So the top of the sleeve has been joined to the dress, but the sleeve has not been joined. Then I would pause before joining the sleeve together and I would do that smocking. You really cannot pull up on those pleats too much in this situation. It's at the wrist area of a newborn dress, so you're not going to be able to get it too small thanks to the ease of the smocking. So, what I'm trying to say is do your smocking now, since it's much easier than doing it after the sleeve gets joined together and you're trying to work into that tiny joined wrist, right? Now the last thing I'd like to go over before sending you to that construction video is there's a little bit of lace shaping on the back of this bonnet. To do this, trace the shape onto your fabric using that heat activated pin. Then get a work surface that has some padding so you can pin into. If you happen to have a lace shaping board, that's great, but if not, an ironing board will substitute just fine. You'll work around the larger side first, giving it a very, very slight tug as you pin the shape into place. Very, very slight pull. Then, once the outside area has been pinned into place, now you can grab some of those threads from the lace header. You'll want to grab at least two threads, and now you can gently pull on those threads, which will cause the lace to lay down nicely. From there, you need to transfer those pins, that way you can take your fabric off of your surface, right? And I highly recommend that you hand base before sewing the lace to the fabric. You can sew the lace to the fabric with a straight stitch, a small zigzag, or a pin stitch. And it kind of increases in difficulty in that order. Then I have detailed videos that go over all of that. Go check out the construction video for gown number two. I am so proud of you that you are doing this and you are off to a great start. Remember, learning is a process. It's never about perfection. It's always about getting better than your previous self while enjoying the journey. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.